Bill Isaacs was not afraid of greatness. He achieved it. As lacrosse's first superstar, he learned the game on the Six Nation Reserve when the professional teams came calling. He and his older brother Lance left the reserve when uh, I guess they were in their late teens or early 20s. They had been recruited to play professional lacrosse uh, and uh, that's what they did. They left the reserve and left that, that way of life. However, the scoring duo's prowess would end in tragedy on the lacrosse court. Both of them were playing in Toronto at Maple Leaf Gardens and uh, Lance uh, sustained a heavy blow to the chest and uh, ruptured his heart and he died right there on the uh, floor. And uh, I, I do remember my dad talking about Lance a little bit and he was saying that uh, somebody had been complimenting my dad about how uh, good he was and how uh, superior he was to the other players and my dad was saying Lance was bigger and he was better than, than my dad and uh, so he, he must have really been something. Following Lance's death, Bill was regularly recruited for summer and winter leagues around southern Ontario and western New York. But one team he turned down could have provided Hollywood fame. My dad was recruited uh, by some individuals who were starting up the professional lacrosse league in California on the west coast and uh, dad was targeted as one of the main people uh, and I guess uh, my mother was pregnant with me at the time and in the, that day and age travel was somewhat hazardous and uh, they decided that they would pass on that, that he wouldn't take the position, he wouldn't go to uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, for this team. So they recruited some other people in his place and interestingly enough one of them was a fellow who came to be known as Jay Silverheels, who ended up playing Tonto on the uh, Lone Ranger series on television. The Lone Ranger! Uh, I sort of every once in a while think, hmm, that could have been me or my dad. <laughs> We've caught up with our old enemy at last. Me think you right, Kim Wasabi. But Bill was no sidekick. The offense went through him. He was routinely the leading scorer in senior Ontario lacrosse. He was on a different level, running the floor and orchestrating plays. As my father is moving up the court, uh, it, it, he was telling people where to go. And it was almost like a dance. You could see people moving, and I could see my father moving from side to side. And I know he was anticipating where things were going to end up, where the ball would go, where it would come out, and where the people were moving. And I thought to myself, it's just like a dance. The problem is, the other people don't hear the music. Being the top player made Bill a target, but this was common. Bill knew exactly how to divert his opposition's focus. There was one time he had a, a laceration on his left leg, uh, on his thigh, above, above the knee and halfway to his hip. And it wasn't that big. It was maybe, a, oh, maybe about an inch to two inches long, but it was quite deep and it was maybe a quarter inch wide. So they were getting ready to play a game. And what they did is they put a small band-aid on his leg. And then on his right leg, where there was nothing wrong, they put a great big wrap, about six inches high. And, uh, and I remember the next day, uh, we were in the house and he was changing and I looked and I saw his left leg, the cut, was healing quite nicely, no problems. His right leg was a mess. There were bruises all over the place, but uh, they won. <laughs> Bill Isaacs amassed over 900 points, won three man cups, and left little doubt about his position in lacrosse history. We never talked about how good he was because it was just accepted. Everybody, whoever I came in contact with, would always not hesitate and simply say, your dad was the best there was. The Hamilton Sports Hall of Fame welcomes Bill Isaacs.